Thanks for joining us for tonight's Women's National League show with Final Whistle.ie and myself, Alana Canan. Lots to come in the next hour. We've Sinead Taylor from Bohemians with their Daily Mount escapades. We've Roshi Malloy chatting all things at Lone Town and what Tommy Hewitt and uh, those guys are build building up there in the Midlands. We've Cork City's Eva Mangan then on her rocket up the ranks before we conclude with Breffney Early on a review and preview of the games themselves. So we'll kick off now. Now, hey, joining us to start with, as I said, we've uh, Sinead Taylor from Bohemians who had their first ever home game in Daily Mount uh, there at the weekend. Thanks for coming on, Sinead. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and as I mentioned, first ever home game in Daily Mount, but not so nice weather-wise, I guess, for it. But what was it like to to play there at the weekend, Sinead? No, it's absolutely brilliant. Like, obviously, the weather kind of hindered people coming out to watch. Like, there was still a good few in the crowd, to be fair, but um, the weather was just... It's the worst I've ever played in in a long, long time. Really? Yeah. That bad? Yeah. Yeah, it looked it even on the screen. Um, and I saw you tweeted there as well. You mentioned there the few fans that came out and fair play to them for sticking it out. But they had their banners and their support going. So maybe would you say that's maybe something we're seeing a bit more of in women's football of late? Yeah, absolutely. I think going forward, and I think if the weather hadn't been as bad at the weekend, we probably would have had more support as well. So looking forward to this weekend's game. We should have a few more out supporting us. But I think um, attendance-wise, um, like even when we played Shell's first game of the season, the attendance was brilliant. Like people are actually coming to watch the games now. And I think especially it's good for like younger fans as well because they really enjoy it. And then they get to do like, you know, they meet and greet afterwards. We had a few girls came into the changing room and chatted with us after. So I think they were delighted, you know. What's that like for you guys then, I suppose, having that onus on you to, um, like, you know, obviously, like, kind of inspire the next generation, as I say? Um, yeah, I suppose it's good for us because, like, they can see, obviously, we're playing in Daily Mount. It's such a big stadium and a big ground, and they can see, look, in a few years, that could be me, you know, so it might push them on to inspire them to kind of, and us as role models then have to be, you know, it's good to encourage them to come and watch and play and then come and visit the dressing rooms afterwards and give them a little tour. They were delighted with it. So I think it's good going forward. Yeah, and maybe actually Bowes might have played a game in Daily Mount before. I actually must have to double check that one, but it's solidified now as the home ground that you're going to play at. And um, that's a real strive forward by the club, many would say. I feel though there's kind of, watching Bowes, there's kind of a bit more to come out of you yet, would you say? I feel like you haven't quite tapped into your potential 100%. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think because obviously the, we've we had six new signings as well, so kind of gelling as a team. We're getting there on the pitch, um, on and off the pitch, we're gelling too. But I think games wise, we haven't fulfilled our potential just yet. Um, we're still we have a few injuries. I've like been waiting for Yvonne Hedigan to come back. Kira Mars is back in the squad. We had a few out with COVID, so I think once we have our core group of players, I think we'll be doing really like we'll be doing better in games. Yeah, and you have to um, knit in all, all those new sign-ins as well and um, kind of work together and gel together, uh, including yourself, of course, but the captain's armband for, for you too. What's what's that like? Does it bring with it kind of a pressure or an honour or maybe a different feeling entirely? And I think for me, it's probably just an honour like to be captain of one of the biggest clubs in the league. Um, and No, I wouldn't see it as a pressure. Do you know, I think it's more of a privilege than anything. And for the girls to, like, the girls all rowing behind me and they were accepting of it and everything so I think being the experienced one I think they were happy <laughs> enough as well you know so yeah no it's really good I'm enjoying it. And how do you kind of um cater to that as you say kind of Sinead experience tag do you kind of like kind of not like when people kind of bring that up or what 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 do you kind of what's your reaction to that when people bring it up because I know I saw a lot recently um sportswomen tweeting that you know people are nearly retiring them before they're even at that stage at all and um, what would your reaction be to that um I think experience is good and I obviously for me I think I'm just embracing every game because I'm, I'm at the end like I'm getting towards the end of my career you know there's not long left so I think there's no pressure on me just going out enjoying myself and like the girls know that and they all, you know, there's nothing that I've done in the last few years. If they have any questions, you just ask, you know. So I think sometimes that's, especially because we have such a young squad, you kind of need a bit of experience to go with it. Mm -hmm. So I think on and off the pitch, it's good as well. 
and like the lads are delighted because they needed a bit of experience and the girls are happy enough as well because obviously you need your experience you need a bit of leadership as, to go with it Do you know it's like hand in hand and you've been around a few of the women's national league teams over the years i i won't ask you which one you prefer best but do you kind of find there's different let's say vibes at each of the clubs like for example you know people always say wexford is a real fine family dynamic and maybe bowls like put themselves as a real community club too um like how would you kind of compare bohemian setup to let's say some of the other clubs you've been at um like the bowls one is completely different because they can't you kind of get drawn in you're like hooked in because they have the community aspect of it as well like we're all at the game on monday night and we're going to support the lads and i think it's just a big draw on the community as well and even seeing the like the crowds that came out at the weekend with their banners and stuff just gives a sense of community and like the people that run the club shop like people behind the scenes do so much within the community i know it's, a lot, it's the same with a lot of the clubs but i think just with bowls in general it's just i i haven't come across anything like it actually do you think it runs both ways as well like you guys said you're saying you went to the men's match there earlier in the week do you get the support from the typical men's side of the club as well? Yeah, absolutely. We're kind of we're seen under the one umbrella, which is really good. You know, we're not two separate entities. We're all seen as just one club as bo- you know, Bohemian. So it's really good. And um, I read somewhere there when I was doing a bit of research that you used to play for Blackburn underage. Is that right? Yeah. So that's why I have a funny accent. Everyone always asks. So I would have spent 13 years there before we moved back. So, yeah, I played underage with them before um, moving over. And what was that experience like? Do you think it kind of gave you the passion for it, obviously? Yeah, I think from a different, it's a different perspective when you see how the way things are run over there from grassroots level up and the way things are run here. Like, even now we still have a long way to go, but we're getting there, which is good. And what do you think steps could come in there to kind of improve that, uh, keep going? Like, obviously, there's more attention on the league now. So does that kind of help things in that regard? Yeah, absolutely. Like, it just that just helps with the growth of the women's game as well. More attention we get, maybe we'll get more sponsorship, more investors, and then the league can only grow from there. It's the same with the WSL. When Barclays came on board and they pumped money in, you know, things just kind of grew. So I think hopefully we'll get to that stage soon in another few years. And then on from that, then you played rugby for Ireland, football for Offaly, and soccer <laughs> for all these major women's national league clubs. How do you have time for it all over the years? Um, that's why I say I'm more broke up now than anyone else because it was a lot. Do you know, like especially I had to retire from the rugby because I actually got so injured that I didn't think I'd be able to play soccer again. So that's why I kind of retired from rugby. Um, but I still I still go and support the girls like Railway Union like obviously Lindsay Pete and all my friends are still there and like I was watching them in the final the other week on the telly so I'll be going down on Sunday hopefully to support them in the other final that they're in so I still would support and obviously my heart is with Offaly and I would keep an eye on the scores keep an eye on the teams it just it's just a massive part of me and do you think all of those kind of skills work in tandem with each other each other today you know there's so many um, football players in the Women's National League but also in other sports that play a variety of sports do you think they all kind of work hand in hand with each other um, and maybe can be applied to do no matter what sport people take on? Yeah I think they're kind of interchangeable as well like obviously rugby is kind of ball in hand carrying the ball and um, Gaelic is with your feet soccer is with your feet you know I think the fundamentals of all of them kind of go together nicely when you're playing soccer um, and I've seen, you, we've seen it ourselves like most of the National League players have always played Gaelic you know, and they're trying to tie in the two so it's obviously a massive commitment to play just not only National League but other sports as well and it's a credit to everyone that is doing a couple of sports and well it, uh, it like all serves to one purpose but apart from that as you said maybe it does take a toll on the body over time yeah absolutely like I suppose I was playing Gaelic last year as well as when I was with Wexford and you know, you were going to get a Gaelic game on a Sunday after playing a game on a Saturday and you were just dead. So you kind of really had to focus on your, like, looking after yourself as best you can so you could try and play the ball and not get injured. Because if you get injured in one, then you're injured for the two of them and then everyone, you know, everyone's given out then. Everyone loses out. So is yeah. that a cl- club football? Yeah, yeah. Was that in Offaly or Wexford? No, it's up in Dublin. So I play with Clannagale. 
yeah, so I'll be going back hopefully in summer because I can't commit just at the moment with the way things are. A, a June star, as they say. <laughs> um, but yeah, you mentioned there, as I say, obviously the amount of time commitment it does take. Um, with work and everything, how do you end up balancing it all? Like it must be a lot all together and then throw in travel time on top of it as well. Yeah, I think for me, that's one of the main reasons why I left Wexford because I was so stuck with time. Like I'm in college in Carlo. So like I'm getting up a quarter past five and getting my gym session in. I'm on the road by half seven. I'm not getting home till six o'clock. Might be trying to grab something to eat and you're out the door again to go to training. Do you know, so it's like, it's not too bad to train on a Tuesday and a Thursday. So I'm not doing the evening shift every night, but it's still, you know, you're kind of rushing from here and there and trying to get everything in. That's mad that you're up at quarter past five and then you could nearly be going until training in the evening. Do you think people kind of realise the nearly seven day a week commitment that is taken into um, playing for teams, let's say in the Women's National League? You know, that's a lot, but people mightn't even take that into account maybe. Yeah, I don't think people understand the like the sacrifices and things that we actually do give up and that the, the time that we do put in. Um, like I know we're only amateurs really. And it is a lot, especially, you know, on family life, personal life. Um, but we play, we do it because we love it. You know, I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it. That's what keeps you going. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, you mentioned earlier, you're a big advocate of, um, let's say, the rugby, for instance, but also kind of a variety of sports I can kind of see um, from your social media. Is that important to you to kind of support other sports as well as women's actually? Yeah, absolutely. I think as females playing sport, we kind of have to support one another. Um, and the more support we bring to each other, I think it's only better. And especially if we can raise awareness for all the sports, it's really good. And um, going forward then, big one for, for you this weekend, uh, Wexford Bulls. I think I'm actually off to that one. Are you excited to see how you get on there? Some some old friends or maybe new foes. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. Like it is exciting, and we're playing in Daily Mountain again. I'm just hoping that the weather won't be as bad as last week. Um, it'll be a good challenge to see where we're at, and I think, I think if if we have everyone and COVID's not affecting us, I think we'll give it a really good run, and I'd be hoping for the three, three points. Like obviously, works are going to put it up to us, cup champions, you know. So we'll just go and see, go out and give it our best and see how we get on. And um, where do you think Bo's expectations lie then, the final one from Misha Nate, for, for the rest of the season? Like, obviously, we're a few games in now, two games, I think it is, and obviously the next, third round to come this weekend. Where where are you guys hoping to challenge this year? We're really hoping for top four and to get a good run in the Cup and hopefully get to a Cup final. That's really our aim this year, to kind of push on and progress from last year. Um, I think it's attainable. I don't see why. Uh, if we just keep putting in the performances and see how we get on, um, and obviously the team cohesion and everything that goes with it I think will be hopefully in the top four and in the cup final touch wood Perfect, well looking to, forward to see that one on Saturday as you say hopefully with a bit better weather so thanks for joining us today Sinead Thanks for having me Now next up we've Roshi Malloy who Sinead would have played against on Saturday with at Lone Town at the weekend so thanks for chatting us tonight Roshi Thanks very much for having me on. Yeah, so as I mentioned, a big one for you guys at the weekend, finishing up 1-1 against Bulls in Delhi went, and uh, a goal even for yourself. Uh, how do you think the performance went? Yeah, like like Sinead said, like the, the weather was horrendous, like the conditions. We'd never played anything like it. Uh, well, I haven't anyway. Um, so, yeah, we were a bit... It was the same for both teams, though, so we were probably a bit disappointed to be 1-0 down at half time. Um, but I think we just... Yeah, we went out in the second half with um, a really good attitude and, and a f good fight and we got back into the game. Um, and I think we did well after that. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a positive, you know, to take a point uh, and move on um, from that. And as you said, terrible conditions, but maybe a terror more so for defenders and uh, not for yourself. What was it like to get on the score sheet? Uh, yeah, it was great like to, to get one um, early enough on the season. Um Dana, uh, she was up front. She did really well for the goal, so it was it was an easy enough tap in for me in the end. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's nice to get a goal early on and hopefully get a few more as the, as the season goes on as well. Set set the tally rolling, Rotty. <laughs>
Um, yeah, so obviously Sinead mentioned um, the advantages that can come with playing a number of sports. Do you find that too, obviously, so playing bits and pieces of LGFA and Sligo and so on? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I would have played uh, both growing up a lot. Um, it's definitely easier to balance both when you're, when you're younger. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of advantages to playing both, you know, for your fitness and, and everything as well. So um, yeah, I definitely enjoy playing both. And um, yeah. <laughs> you, you, say, you say it when you're younger as if you're very much older. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, but you know, like when you start playing at a higher level, I like, think it can become more difficult then. And you're uh, 20, Roisin, is it? Yeah, that's it, yeah. So you're, you're in college yet in, in Athlone? Yeah, I'm actually I'm studying at Athlone now as well. So when I made uh, the move to Athlone Town, um, kind of just made sense, you know, to, to start college then at Athlone and then, you know, get the combination of studying and, and training in the evenings. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy that up in Athlone now at the minute. Yeah, full on, full on though too. I'm sure. I know the travel commitment to be cut out, um, given that you're already there. But so full, full going. I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy that though. Like it's it's a busy enough week, um, and then obviously playing at the weekend. But yeah, it's it's nice to be able to study and play in in the same area. You know, you're not getting in the car and to travel in the evening. So yeah, that's definitely a positive to 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 that. And what would you say, um, the team bond is like an alone at the minute as you mentioned there earlier you know you really kind of I think are coming together this season you really seem to be kind of building something there I know even um like Tommy Hewitt is clearly trying to do that Laurie Ryan mentioned it at the league launch is that what maybe kind of enticed you to stay in that loan even though there was like other opportunities let's say Sly Rovers closer to your hometown yeah I think like um, this at loan's third season in the in the league. Um, that my first season last last season, so like there would have been a lot of new girls, you know, in that season. Um, and we've kept that core group of players now, so a lot of us know each other, and obviously we've added to the squad as well. But yeah, I think everyone gets on like really well, and it's a really close bond between the team, um, and that's important as well, you know, um, going forward. It's still a very young side, though, at that routine. And as you say, you need to have the bits of leadership going forward to kind of get the team going where you want it to go, I presume. So what's that like, kind of everyone, I suppose, trying to get that ethic together that you are trying to push forward, but yet everyone being quite young? Yeah, I think um, we are obviously a young squad, um, but a lot of us do have experience now, you know, at least I think nearly everyone has, you know, one season under the belt, which is important. Um, and then, you know, we have the likes of like Laurie, who's our captain, and she's got so much experience, you know, playing high level football. Um, and she's like a great leader for us. And every day she goes out, like she leads by example. So I think we definitely have leaders in the team um, and then obviously the young girls as well. So it's definitely a good blend. And you've become a major player in that setup too. Uh, do you kind of take that in your stride, or how do you find that? Because I think you got players, player of the year, or you got player of the year there last year, didn't you? Uh, players, player of the year, or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Like, um, it's nice being, you know, uh, part of the team and and I'm trying to just trying to help the girls along in, in any way that I can, um, and just hopefully trying to contribute to the team as well. You know, maybe a few goals or something. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking the modest approach, so Roshi. Yeah. Um, so uh, I asked this question to Sinead as well, but what do you think Adlone's goals are for the season? Obviously, you know, um, it's a tough competitive league and even another team in it this year. Um, where do you, where are you guys looking to, looking to challenge this year? Yeah, I think we definitely want to push on this season, um, you know, with the squad that we have and, and the girls that we've added to the team as well. Um, so I think definitely the hat, the top half of the table, you know, top four and five, um, that's definitely the aim. And, and a cup run as well would, would be great. Um, so, yeah, hopefully just improving on last year and, and hoping to push on. What kind of obstacles do you think are in place of that, Roisin? Because obviously, like, you know, as you said, you've strengthened, but a lot of other teams around you have too. Yeah, like every game you go out and play is so tough. Like, you know, every team is good, so you can't uh, expect to win or get a result out of any game. You have to go out every day, you know, and be so competitive. So, um, yeah, obviously the, the top three teams, you know, they're so hard to beat. Uh, so, yeah, they, that'll definitely be an aim this year to, to try and get results against um, them, one of them top three teams, you know. Um, 
So yeah, hopefully. And, and if uh, if last year is anything to go off, it definitely can be done. You know, upsets left, right, and centre, and even the last game of the season. I mean, no one saw that one coming. But like, were you guys kind of watching on, thinking, "Geez, like the dramatics of that"? You'd love to be involved in that kind of thing. Yeah, I was mad. I remember we were playing uh, bows that night as well, and there was like even cheers in our stadium. Like, it was, it was crazy. Um, so yeah, obviously, you know, you want to be involved in those type of games. Um. But yeah, it was definitely great for the league and um, yeah. And uh, obviously we were talking there earlier about um, Athlone's expectations for the season. You mentioned that you'd maybe like to knock in a couple of goals. What's the personal objective for you this year or what are you looking to achieve, do you think? Yeah, I suppose last season was my first season playing uh, Women's National League. So um, it's good to have one season under my belt now and I just want to keep on improving, you know, and getting better and um, as I said earlier, you know, hopefully score some goals and assists as well, you know. But I think all of us um, as a team, you know, we've added a lot of new players to the squad as well that'll, that'll help us, you know, the likes of Gillian Keenan uh, from Trudy, like she's a massive player and then two girls from America as well, you know, they've come in and, and they'll add a lot to, to the squad. So I think we have a lot more, you know, attacking options as well and, and hopefully that'll help us, you know, score. <laughs> Yeah, um, shells for you then at the weekend, a big test, but um, I think you guys really showed when you played Wexford at home there that, like, you know, you really are able to put it up to them and I'd uh, say you're looking to do that again this weekend. Yeah, obviously it's, it's a massive test for us, you know, they're the champions for the reason. Um, so, yeah, it'll be, it's good to test yourself against the best teams, you know, and see where you're, see where you're at in comparison to them. Um, but, yeah, we, we'll analyse them and... and and focus on our own game as well and hopefully get something out of the game. Um, you know, we want to go out every day and, and be competitive and, and try and get three points out of the, the games. Especially at home too, I'd say. Yeah, especially. Yeah, yeah I think... Yeah, it's, I think, like, even when we played Wexford there um, two weeks ago, like, um, we were definitely very competitive and we want to make, you know, at the Town Stadium a hard place to come. So, yeah, that'll definitely be the aim against Shelburne now. Great stuff, Roisin. Well, thanks again for your time and uh, I hope it all goes well for you at the weekend. Thanks very much. Now, our final playing guest before we move on to a review and preview is Cork City <laughs> Stephen Magan. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me. Now, you're supposed, you were supposed to be involved in one of the cancelled and postponed fixtures of the weekend. A lot of people are saying, you know, both of those fixtures, be it Shells, Utes or yourself, Cork versus Treaty, um, would have been would have told a lot about where people are to stand come the end of the league. Do you reckon it was a bit of a welcome break or were you annoyed not to have gotten out there last weekend? Oh, no, I think um, myself and all the girls were quite annoyed that, that it was postponed because we were ready and we analysed them and we felt like we were going to give them a good game and hopefully get three points on the table and push on since we didn't get it in Galway. So, look, we were disappointed, but we can't wait for Sligo now at home. So hopefully we can push on, get the three points. And would you say that in that regard, like it's kind of these games that Cork are really looking to target as ones to try and, as you say, accumulate the points or where do you guys anticipate to, to be this year? Look, I think we're trying to get three points in every game and go into every game knowing that luck will give our our best shot and try to get um, three points. And we sat down as a team at the start of the season and said, look, we're well capable, capable of getting in top four if we come to each game and give it the best shot. So I think top four if we come to each game and play our best we're well capable we have players coming up and new players signing like Aoife Cronin um, giving us the attacking options and she can bang in a few goals for us this year hopefully Jeez, top four is going to be a tough spot this year everyone's going for it even tonight <laughs> we've Cork everyone and Bo's up there going for it yeah no a lot of teams um, this year have gotten new players and it's it's good in the league now that it's not like there's three teams fighting for the title that each team is giving um the top three teams now a good game and it'll make the league more exciting and hopefully more people will come on and watch it and stuff like that so yeah 
Yeah, you talked there, obviously, of the increased interest. And I mentioned earlier the Cork Treaty game. Now, I know it was the alternate fixture of that and Turner's Cross that it was the record attendance um, was set at that game last year. It was kind of rehashed again um, last weekend when Sligo were trying to go for their record attendance. Do you think that really shows the increased interest in the Women's National League? Yeah, I love to be a part of the treaty game at the end of the season it it was unreal like even the buzz that week in training we were all up for it and the the creds when we were even warming up it was like like wow like if this could be every game um to look like, shout us on and get us over the line I think I think it's great for the league and for young girls coming and wanting to get on the Cork City team when they're older I think it's I think it's good for the league we have competitiveness now so it's great you're touching on there, obviously, the people at that game and the younger girls watching on. Do you find kind of in your day to day that people maybe talk to you about it more or have more of a, a interest in it? Yeah, definitely. Like at the end of the game, there is a lot of young kids and they're asking for photographs and autographs. And like to think that was me only like three or four years ago, it's kind of mad like to think, oh, they think we're like celebrities now. So it was nice. <laughs> like, um. But we really enjoyed it. Look, we worked hard that season, so to like see the crowds at the end of the game, it was it was good to finish off season in a high. Yeah, and you're saying there that maybe that was you three or four years ago. Even at so young, no more than Roisin, you know, you're winning Player of the Year. Is like, what's that kind of like to do that um, at such a young age? You're making such a big impact. Yeah, no, it was surreal. Like to even make my senior debut last year I didn't even think I'd be involved in the team so like if you told me last season that I would have won it I probably would have laughed at you and said that you're mad like, so to go on and win it it was it was special uh, moment for me and I can't not thank the team and the management for for like their big part of it so yeah it was it was a great feeling in all fairness. A senior debut and a player of the year in the same year Wow. Yeah, I know. It's it's crazy to think back on it, but I like to think that it's just the start now and I can keep on going and improving each year. So yeah, it's and in, in the time. in the Ireland camp too, you know, in with the under nineteens, I, I hear you're a mad bunch. Yeah, no. We're a great <laughs> team. Though. We're a great team and we have the laugh, but when it's down to business we get down to the business, but it's nice to have the lap and camp and stuff and I think that our team gels great and it's it's not like it's just there's clicks I think you get on with anyone and you can talk to anyone so yeah we're a great bunch yeah. of friends because <laughs> even in the promotional videos you know you were tagged a few times as the funniest and that what do you what do you reckon to that <laughs> accolade up there with the player of the year I'm sure <laughs> uh no I was delighted I was delighted to get the funniest um with Kate Slevin she's the two of us, we're um, told we're trouble together. So uh, <laughs> it's nice to think they think um, I'm funny out, but yeah, it's good. Trouble trouble on the pitch maybe too. You cause plenty of havoc up there um, for both Cork and Ireland. What's what's the Ireland experience been like for you so far? You touched on there that kind of camp dynamic, but getting to play all these sides and have that bit more of um, high-level football as well. Yeah, to... Even in camps, the intensity is, it's mad. It's everyone competing for a spot and it's kind of like your spot isn't always yours. It's always new people coming in and you kind of have to keep on performing. But I enjoy it because that's that's where I develop the most. And playing top teams like Denmark or Norway, like the their fitness and their um, speed, it's, it's mad like comparing to the Women's National mm -hmm. League. So to be able to to play against them and be part of that it's it's upping my game each um time so it's great for my game time to improve me as a player so yeah I'm bringing the league on as a whole too because as you say when you compete at that top level it kind of translates back to the women's national league in a way too because you're ever rising the competitive standard yeah definitely look it's good to see that um our under 19 team it's I'd say over 75% of us are starting and playing in um, the National League. So it's great for the competitiveness and um, just week out and week out, we'll just um, keep on raising the bar and hopefully 
that we'll just keep on bringing it up each week. And as you touched on earlier with the um, awards, the only way is kind of up, even though you've done so well already. Do you feel there's big expectations to live up to over the next while, maybe? Um, a small bit. I feel a small bit of pressure, but look, if I just do what I done last season and keep on training the way I was and um, getting the recovery in, like I can just it'll just take care of itself my performances so hopefully I can start off with high now and get a few goals and assists and contribute to the team and uh, yeah maybe we'll have to wait and see how that one plans out I'm sure there's there's no doubt there but yeah finally Sligo Rovers this weekend as you mentioned there at the start it's shaping up to be an interesting battle I think yeah look we're well excited for it since the first game of the season didn't go our way but I think if we just go and, and bring our A game, which we're all capable of, I hope we'll get the three points. And we put a, a lot of work into the Galway game. We looked at um, our weaknesses and our strengths. And if we bring it all on Saturday, hopefully we'll get the three points. But um, they gave DLR a good game last week. So mm. hopefully, hopefully we can do the job now and get the three points. Perfect. Well, thanks for taking the time to the... Yeah. Well, mix up there. Uh, thanks for taking the time this evening and um, best of luck at the weekend. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so to close the site then, I'm joined by Brefley Early to discuss the latest encounters as well as what to expect this weekend. So lots of uh, jam-packed stuff there, Brefley. We had our fill of goals over the weekend anyways. Absolutely. Some fantastic, uh, absolute Amazing goals uh, across the league. In a couple of games, we all saw Stephanie Roach's uh, long-range efforts down in a uh, former host of the show, of course, uh, from last year. Uh, we saw her efforts over the weekend from uh, him and DC Park, two great goals from her down there. Um, but for me, the, the best score of the weekend came in, in the showgrounds with the second goal, Rachel Doyle's first. A fantastic header from a great piece of work and a fantastic cross by Sarah McCabot uh, into the top corner. Chris and Sample, absolutely no chance of keeping that out. So uh, that, for me, was probably the move of the weekend. But there were goals all over the place. Four in Emma DC Park, uh, all for P-Mount. They topped the table. Two wins out of two, 10 goals, no, none conceded. DLR in hot pursuit. I think they have eight goals scored, none conceded, two wins. They had three uh, strikes, Rachel Doyle with two, and Alfred Brearley with a very early um, one that I think will disappoint Steve Feeney more so than anything else. Just seemed to be a bit... Bit of a switch off, it just caught them cold, caught Sligo Rovers cold on their on their big day. Great crowd in the showgrounds. Uh, reports have it somewhere around nine, 945 or so. I didn't think it was that myself, if I'm honest. I thought it was probably a little bit less. So great to see such a, a, a high attendance. But the interest was great. The atmosphere was great. I know you were there as well. Um, you couldn't but get just pu pulled along with it. And a reasonable performance from the girls as well. So uh, Sligo will be very happy with their, uh, I suppose, their performance from last weekend. Definitely. And as you said, I think Sarah McEvitt was really outstanding in that game and she's really racking up the assists even this early in the league. She's already, I think it's four or five four. she has. Yeah, that's so impressive given we've only two games gone. Like, I mean, what I'll, be honest. I'll, be, I'll be honest, I saw the, the team in a week during the week and it actually, how she didn't make that, I don't know. I know these things, uh, whether it's individual awards player of the years, I know we've talked about it a bit with some of the girls who've been on the show already tonight, but um. <clears throat> Whether players take much heed in them, they're always nice, but they're a bonus. But mm -hmm. how Sarah McEvitt was not in that team of the week uh, from last week it mystifies me. I don't know who was looking at the game, but um, I just thought she was the best player on the pitch. And mm -hmm. she just, everything she did was positive. It was forward, it was fast, it was um, clever. And I just thought she had a fantastic 90 minutes uh, under her belt on, on a Saturday afternoon. I was very, very impressed with her. Definitely. She spun the fear of God into defenders there on that right wing. Um, and as you mentioned too, Stephanie Roach with arguably, as everyone's saying, another podcast award winning goal there, maybe. <laughs> well, I think she probably will be the first to stop you uh, <laughs> talk, talking those kind of superlatives. I think that was, uh, she'll say herself, the chances of another WNL goal uh, reaching those kind of uh, heights is probably limited. Uh, although we do see good goals, you do need to have something a little bit special. And uh, But it was a fantastic effort. Real great from distance. Didn't give the keeper any chance. I think Leah, Leah Hayes Cohen and goals for Galway um, had no no hope of keeping that out. And it was just unfortunate the way it panned out from a, a Galway point of view. But a lovely opportune strike from Steph. She's been doing that for, for 
donkey's years though she's been in the shots like that I, I saw her do that 10 12 13 years ago um and, and i think i'll probably see her for a couple of years yet the way she's playing at the moment she's uh joint top of the goal scorers charts i think she's got four in the opening two games i'm delighted for her on a personal note i know she was involved in the show last year but uh, work commitments personal commitments just she, she's not here this year and we've obviously passed the reins to yourself but um but she, she deserves it because she works really really hard and maybe do, sometimes doesn't get the credit that she deserves on the pitch at times and uh great to see her back amongst the goals yeah and i brought it up there with eva that maybe the cancellations um last weekend really was kind of disappointing because they were cracking games and would have shown us a lot about where each of those teams would stand come come the end of the year in the table maybe but we did as you said have sligo de lore and um bows at loan too um that was a tight one as well and kind of two sides too that are going to be battling out with each other throughout the season yeah i think the bows at loan game i was impressed with bows the opening weekend i thought they had a they had a nice resilience to them um at the same time i think at loan at loan have that kind of doggedness they don't really like uh giving up games and they will battle to the end we saw some really really good cr- uh, challenges there with from them last year when they scored late on to, to draw games or maybe snatch a win and i think seeing them in daily month the other evening um <clears throat> technically maybe not quite there 100 percent but from a battle point of view um phenomenal performance from athlone to take a point back from daily month they'll be really really happy with that i don't think too many people would have expected them to do that i think bose with a couple of the girls that they've signed people would have expected bose to take all three points from that uh, interesting to hear um uh, predictions that some of the players have made on the show tonight about where they hope to end up i think fifth place for bose um mm. is is probably realistic uh, fifth place for Athlone, I think it will be a fantastic season if they get to top five. It's not beyond them, but they will need to perform in nearly every single game, week in, week out, to get that. There's just a little bit of stronger squads around them and just above them at the moment. Um, and I put, obviously, the top four from last year, uh, Piemont, Shells, Wexford, DLR, potentially Bowes uh, in there as well. I think they'll be... Uh, they, they will probably be there, thereabouts for the top five this year. So, But very, very impressed. But DLR have been phenomenal. Um, I spoke briefly to Graham Kelly during the week. Um, just going to actually on the performance. I was very impressed with not just the manner of the win, but the, the actual approach they took at the weekend in the showgrounds. Everyone was talking about Sligo, but I, I think DLR for me, I think DLR will bridge that gap to third place. Whether they can go to second or first, I don't quite know yet, but I think it will be definitely a top four this year. I would worry for Wexford. They've lost a couple of key players. I uh, would have liked to have seen them against Shells at the weekend, but I think uh, Lynn Craven is going to be a loss at the back. She's she's organised. She's she's vocal. Um, she gets stuck in. She's not afraid to, to kind of ch- challenge for the ball, and I think she will be a loss for them. A couple of girls they've lost. Even Sinead Taylor, I know she kind of played a bit part-ish down in Wexford last year, uh, but just no one went to to be in the right place at the right time. She has that little bit of a knack, and I think Bowes will benefit from that. I think you could see Wexford... Uh, struggle to stay with those other teams, the top three at the moment. That's interesting, those kind of calls. Bowes uh, fourth, you said, I think, and then DLR to break into that top. Well, I didn't say Bowes fourth, I said Bowes fifth, potentially. Bowes fifth, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I think I think Bowes would be probably fifth or sixth, and I would fancy them maybe to be sixth. Uh, Galway uh, are a concern. I think I did not expect to see them beaten 4 0 at the weekend, even by a strong P Mount yeah. side, uh, but I think they will take up points against the likes of. I think Sligo are going to struggle. I think Treaty are going to struggle. I, I called it here when I was with you two or three weeks ago with Sligo. Mm. Um, not impressed, if I'm honest. And I, and I, I don't mean that's, that sounds harsh because I'm, mm. I was involved in Sligo being set up. And I think it's fantastic on a personal note and from for the whole Northwest region where, where we're both from to see to see what is capable there. But I think the fact that we're talking to Roshi Malloy tonight, who's not in a Sligo jersey, haven't played for Sligo before, and there's many more like her. There's a couple at Galway. There's a few at Lone. And uh, Caleb Dowd has signed for Shells. And there's a few girls playing Gaelic, whether it's Leitrim, Sligo, or Mayo as well. But um, from the underage ranks that were competitive three or four years ago, uh, there's very few of them still involved. And, and none of them started on the pitch the other day. And that's that's disappointing to see that that kind of separation of what was a fairly strong underage unit. That group won a, a Gainer Cup, or got to a Gainer Cup final back at under 14 level, under 15 level in the past. And um, I I think they'll struggle. And, and they're, I, I said that a couple of weeks ago, and I, I haven't changed my mind. I haven't seen it. But Emma Doherty is the, the bright spot for them. I think Emma mm-hmm. Doherty was really, really impressive. 
Um, didn't make the team of the week, but for me, she was the best player for, for Sligo. She looked like she could create something every time the ball came anywhere near her. She was competitive. She was uh, stuck in, and I think she might get them points. Um, Lauren Bowles was decent in the middle of the field, and I think herself and Emma Hansbury will become a really good pair. Emma, probably a couple of weeks away. I know she missed most of preseason. She's a couple of weeks away from being match fit, but I think once she gets back in, the head is still there. And I think Sligo will be a tough nut to crack this year, but I just can't see them picking up that many points. I think there'll be a lot of games like Saturday, 2-0, 3-0 defeats, unfortunately, in their future. But I, I think they'll pick up a couple of points in the second half of the season. Yeah, Aoife Brennan, I thought too, was quite impressive for Sligo. But as I say, they are quite a young side and obviously trying to build into the league, as Roshan was mentioning earlier. It's all about getting those vital game, game minutes under your belt and lead to a more... Um, I suppose, successful side over the coming years. But coming up then at the weekend, we'll start with that one, I think. Obviously, Cork, Sligo, it's a big one for both both sides down in Turner's Cross. I know all, all three guests did today were going for, for top four, but who do you think will maybe nab the points in that one? I think the experience of Cork, um, Eva, who was on just before this chat, um, even impressed me very much through last season. She was only young. She broke into the side um, and she player of the year as you mentioned and but she caught her eye we talked with her very early in the season last year has been one to watch and as she did she came through she won Cork's player of the year award I think they'll they'll have enough just just to beat Sligo at the weekend um, I'd expect Cork to come through that I'd expect them to have just a little bit of extra experience you've got a few players there in the middle of the park um, that just have that little bit of guile uh, and mobility and movement some of those younger players too for Cork, I think. They'll miss Sarah McKevitt. She added a lot to them going forward. Yeah. If Cork can find the back of the net, which against Sligo is not going to be an easy uh, an easy task because they are set up fairly solidly at the back week on week. The improvement from week one to week two was huge. And I think if they keep making those kind of strides, um, no more than their men's team, they're going to be really, really difficult to score against. Um, as the season goes on, but they have to keep improving. But I think Cork, if they can find if they can find the range. 2-0 two, two to Cork, possibly, maybe 2-1 if, if Sligo get a half chance. They did look dangerous when they got the ball, as I said, to Emma Darty. And um, obviously, as you mentioned, Piment kind of up there at the top of the table um, so far. They play 3D this weekend as Shells take on Athlone. Any hope of an upset, do you think, in either of those, Ruffy? I think Athlone might give Shells a game. Last year, it took a Pearl Slattery wonder, wonder strike from distance to separate them early on in the season. We could see something similar. The fact that the game is in Athlone might benefit Athlone down there. It's a nice surface. Shells like to play football, so it could suit either team. But I think I'd expect Shells to come through that by the odd goal or two. Uh, if they score early, it could be a, a multiple of that. Uh, but I think if Athlone can keep it tight and not concede in the first half hour, or first 45 minutes, it could be a nervous one for Shells. And uh, it might take a, another moment of brilliance from someone like Pearl to pop up and uh, and put that in. I think Alex Kavanagh as well on, on set pieces uh, could be a huge uh, addition. She's a great distributor of the ball. If she, if she gets enough opportunities to ping that ball into the box, um, anything can happen. That loan just looked a little bit shaky uh, last week uh, defending those kind of set pieces. So if they can keep that um, those opportunities for, for Shells to get the ball in the box, I think they may have an outside chance of snatching a draw and maybe even getting a win out of the game. But you'd have to back shells that the champions, and as Roshin said, they're champions for a reason. And I think Piedmont Treaty, I think uh, I would be absolutely um, lying if I said I thought Piedmont Treaty had a chance of getting at the end of this game. We didn't see them last week, to be fair to them, uh, but based on the opening weekend, based on, on where they've come from, the players that they've lost, the likes of Jenna Slattery, um, Roshin mentioned Gillian Keenan as well, gone to Athlone. Uh, and there's one or two hit gone to Cork as well, potentially. I can't think of names off the top of my head, but there, there are, um, they've lost a lot of players. They haven't strengthened with quality, with experienced league uh, players. And I think Paymount will win that comfortably. It could be similar to the first two games. We could be looking at a four or five or even six nil if things don't go Treaty's way. I'd love to see it every team competitive, but I just can't see Treaty getting out of that game with, it, with anything more than a, keeping the score down. They are, as you mentioned, just so dominant at the minute, P-Mench. They've really came back with a bang. You know, they're not just winning, they're winning in a bit of fashion as well, um, as you say. So that'll be interesting to see how that one plays out. Um, Bose Wexford then, we had at the top of the show, of course, Sinead Taylor. So you have that storyline, her meeting her former teammates and the youths back in action after um, kind of a rest weekend, last weekend after the cancellation. So that one will be interesting too. Yeah, I think... 
uh, as you as Sinead or as as I what's name as the Eva said earlier in the show, I think um Wexford won't have wanted that weekend off. They would have wanted a, a battle at Shells. They beat them in the cup final. They fancy their chances anytime they take to the field against anybody in the league. And I think they would have liked to have that kind of opportunity to, to lay down a marker for the rest of the league and say, no, we're here. We're, we're going to give Shells a, another run for this title this year. Um, they'll come to Daily Mount. They have a couple of experienced campaigners. Like We all know the names. Um, we had Nicola on the show recently as well. Dale Kennedy's there too. Keith Gray in... in in goals is obviously uh, one of the more experienced players in that position around the league. And I think they should have enough to take the three points back down the road with them down in 11 to, to Wexford. But again, Bowes, they've strengthened well. They've signed a couple of decent players in the off season. Probably haven't seen enough of them. I don't think you can judge too much based on what I watched on the weather last week, uh, that game in Daily Mount. Horrific uh, weather to be playing a football match in. Uh, better conditions this weekend, hopefully, for the game. And I think Bowes will give them a game. But it's a real test for Bowes. It's an opportunity for them. I think if they're going to take a, a punt at one of the top four, I think Wexford are probably the one who the little chinks are just beginning to appear as, as those experienced players just maybe starting to hit that peak. And maybe, I'm not going to say anything, but maybe maybe one or two of them just kind of getting the other side of the peak. And, and there's an opportunity there for someone to come in. Uh, and maybe it's Bowes this year to challenge that top four spot. Uh, Wexford, for me, will be the, the weakest of the four at the moment. I hope they'll come and prove me wrong, uh, but for their sake. But uh, I do think Bowles will give them a good battle this weekend, but I would expect Wexford to come out of there with at least a point, if not all three. Yeah, I think a lot of people are talking as well, hey, there's more to come out of Bowles yet. Obviously, they had made those signings, but they just don't seem to have um, hit that top gear yet. But as Sinead was saying, maybe they were struck a bit by COVID or injuries or that kind of thing. So... There's possibly more to come from them throughout the season. But then the last one then is Galway DLR. I think for me, this is kind of the fixture of the weekend. Um, what do you think, Rafi? Yeah, no, I agree with you 100% because I think Galway have, they'll be hurting after last weekend. They won't have liked losing the p -mount. Particularly, I know we talked on the show last week, or you talked, sure said, to Julianne on the show last week about mm -hmm. the grudges and, and stuff about denying Pima the title last year. And, and there was a bit of banter between Neve Reed Burke, albeit not at the same time, between herself and Julianne Russell on the show. And I think it'll be interesting to see how they react to that. A lot of Galway's play now comes through Julianne. They've lost a couple of their more seasoned campaigners. And it's a quite a young side coming from Galway. There's a few girls no more than what we talked about in Sligo. There's a few girls playing Gaelic with with uh, Galway and Mayo who would otherwise have been available to them. I think they'll have learnt a couple of lessons from last week. I think uh, at the back, they, maybe a couple of those goals, they will be things that maybe the goalkeeping coach might be having a word with this week. It just it just didn't, wasn't a, a great game for, for, for Lee in goals. I didn't see enough of the game to, to judge, to be fair, on the overall, but one or two of the goals I think she'll be less than happy with. It's probably the diplomatic yeah. way of saying that. Um, but she's young. She'll learn. She's only getting her feet into the the position effectively in the league over the last season or two. Um, so she'll, she'll get better and she'll, she'll progress and she'll learn from last week and not make those mistakes again in the future. But I think Galway will be looking to to really make a statement this week and say, we're not, we're not here just to make up the numbers. We are competitive. We can aim at a top half of the table um, position. You're looking at the likes of DLO or coming at them full of pomp. They haven't conceded a goal this season. They've looked solid right from Eve Badana, right out through the, the back four. I think the loss at centre half, um, she was forced off very, very early last week. Her name escapes me now. She was so Jess Leeson uh, went off with an injury last week. If she's out for, for a long period, she could be a loss to um, to DLR and, and, and maybe in terms of the season could be a loss if she's out anywhere long term. If she's available, she's featuring, I would fancy DLR to, to have the the strength and depth there to, to, to bring that home. Bringing on players, the quality of, of Rachel Doyle scoring two goals, albeit the third one, maybe a little bit fortuitous, took a bounce into the back of the net from a free kick that nobody connected with. Um, I don't think she would have expected to score from that, let's just say, but it ended up in the back of the net, she'll take it. Uh, but I think DLR, the second goal that when we talked at the very start of the piece, um, if they can recreate that kind of form, and there's a few players in that team who, who really, really impressed me uh, last week when I was actually at the game in the show runs. And I think if they can keep those players on the pitch fit and in that kind of form, they'll challenge anybody, whether it's the league or the cup this year. I still fancy Shells or Pima to be the top two, but I think DLR could be uh, not so much of a dark horse, but definitely a horse in that race as well. 
if they can keep that momentum up. It's it's pretty impressive so far. Cheltenham's getting to you there, Brecky. <laughs> I'm not into the horses at all, but no, it is. It, it absolutely is a, an opportunity there for, for them to, to get on and, and see how they go. Yeah, as you mentioned as well, Gleason, kind of a massive attrition for DLR, Alita Griffin coming in there for her. Um, a young defender, but definitely one on the rise. And as you say, DLR, Galway, I think, as I mentioned, it's a picture of the weekend for me. Like I say, they both kind of made additions and knocking on the door of those top kind of teams. Ironically, I think as well, they're kind of each other's biggest competitors in that regard, given they could both kind of grab points off either one of each other. So a tough one's call, but I'd say a real crunch decider um, and maybe could have a big effect on the overall standings of the league. But um, yeah, thanks for joining us today, Brefney. It was great kind of wrap up. My pleasure, as always. Perfect. So just to kind of final final outro then, we'll wrap up and uh, we'll be back again at the same time next week. But as I say, thanks again to Brefney for coming on and producing tonight's show, of course. And a big thanks also to all of our guests, uh, Sinead Taylor, Roshi Malloy, Eve Mangan. And uh, yeah, we have a full lineup of matches to come again in the Women's National League this weekend. Fingers crossed they'll all get played. So um, be sure and check them out. For now, though, I've been Alana Canan. This has been Final Whistles Women's National League show. Good night.